Looking for a reliable VPN? Securely access apps, websites, entertainment, and more with NordVPN. With over 5,100 servers worldwide, all your data stays safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. Work, browse, or use social media platforms safely. All at a price you can afford. Get NordVPN today. Today's episode is called, The Valley's New Owner. Uncle Joe forbids Orn from seeing Bobby Joe until he discovers that Orn is heir to the Valley. A rousing rendition of Hooterville, sung to the tune of Camelot, performed by Mike Minor and Linda K. Henning. Original air date, January 24, 1970. The little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of cares, you bet. Need more when you get to the junction. And come to the junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Joe, come and be his guest at the junction. Here's our lady MD, she's as pretty as can be at the junction. Very cold junction. This one or, or this one? <laughs> this one? Jim. Thanks a lot. You're a big help. Sure did. Hi. Well, young man, it's about time you were bringing her home. It's after midnight. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I won't let it happen again. <laughs> How is the day? Oh, it was a lot of fun. I think everybody had a good time. Staying out all hours. And you have to operate in the morning. You should have seen her operate tonight. <laughs> what do you mean, operate in the morning? Uh, Mrs. Potter's cat's gonna have kittens, and I'm sure she'll call on you. <laughs> and what do you mean, operate tonight? She sure made a hit with Ed Belson, veterinary over Crabwell Corners. I'm pretty big with the vet, huh, Joe? And Glenn Pinkerton, the guy at the creamery. She knocked him for a loop. Oh, now, Joe. You'll come calling on her one of these days with a gift wrap box of cottage cheese. <laughs> that sounds like you had a fun evening. Where's Bobby Joe? Well, is she home yet? Well, she and Orrin left before we did. Oh, good old Orrin. He probably took her the long way home, and I don't blame him. You know, if that kid comes home with another one of those cockamamie stories about his Jeep breaking down. Now, relax, Joe. He's a nice boy, and Bobby Joe is very fond of him. Joe, let's not start a big thing in the middle of the night. No, come on. They'll be home very soon. And let's not embarrass Bobby Joe by waiting up for them. I'm not going to embarrass her. I'm just going to ball the kid out. Joe, <laughs> come on. Let's not spoil a nice evening. <laughs> Just ran out of gas. The motor was so quiet. No, I, I coasted in so nobody'd hear us. You're very smart. Thank you. Uh, well, thanks for a very nice evening. Aren't you going to see me to the door? No, no, I, I better not. The, your uncle might still be up, and I kept you out pretty late. Orin, nobody's up. See, just the nightlight is on. Yeah, well. No, no, maybe the dog will start barking. Orin, a gentleman always escorts a lady to the door. Yeah. Well, okay. Oh, what a 
gorgeous moon. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you nobody was up. Yeah, that's a brief. Want to come in? I can fix us some hot chocolate. Well, this is kind of a long trip home. Come on, you can help me. We can explain. Okay, explain. Well, um, explain. <laughs> Not her, you. Well, well, it's actually very simple to explain. All right, let's hear it. My, my Jeep broke down. That does it. Out. <laughs> Sir. Out and stay out. Joe. And I'm ordering you to stop going steady with my knees. Oh, you can't be serious. Out! <laughs> He's serious. <laughs> Bobby Joe, in years to come, you'll thank me for this when you realize it. Bobby Joe! Why are you out on the lake putting down crime? Somebody might be holding in an extra minute, you know. Something more important has come up, Mr. Carson. Oh, it's Mr. Carson now, eh? Oh, I get it. You come over to apologize, so I'll let you go out on my niece again. Well... Okay. I'll make it easy for you. You will? Here. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I, uh, I didn't come to apologize. I came to say goodbye. What? Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, that's right, Bobby Joe. I thought about it all last night, and it's the only way. Your uncle just doesn't like me, and he never will. That isn't true. Oh, no, that isn't true, is it, Joe? <laughs> Joe? <laughs> oh! Look, I, I didn't come to cause any bad feeling between you. As, as a matter of fact, uh, I brought along a few things, uh, sort of, uh, to remember me by. That is, uh, of course, if you care to remember me. <laughs> I'll, I'll go get them. And you're still not going to weaken. Joe Carson, you are impossible. Well, here we are. Oh, hi, I'm glad you're here. What's up? Orin is... Orin is... Orin is going away. Going away? Was it anything anybody said? Please, I didn't want to start a family quarrel. I just, well... Here. Oh, Orin. Well, it's just a box of candy. I, I was saving it for your birthday next week, but... Uh... Well, that's very thoughtful of you. That's the way he is. <laughs> Bobby Joe, don't cry. I can't stand it when you cry. You can't stand it. Uncle Joe. Here. Oh, Orin, it's beautiful. It belonged to my mom. It's my first pearl. It's supposed to be real. We never checked, uh, just in case it wasn't. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. What are you doing? Why be in doubt? Let me bite it. <laughs> um... This is for you. It's an old family Bible. I, I was saving it till I had a family, but uh, it doesn't uh, look like I'm gonna, like that's gonna happen. And so since I'm the end of the line, Orin, we couldn't possibly. Well, sure you can. You've already got a family. And look, there's a place to put important dates, like uh, Kathy Joe's uh, birthday. Oh, thanks. Now wait a minute. What is this? Oh, some old document. It's probably a marriage certificate. That thing was crammed with things like that. I took them all out and put them in a box. 
First I thought I did. I must have missed that. What's the matter? You know what this is? It's a deed. A deed? A very old deed. Who is Ebenezer Pike? Oh, Captain Ebenezer. He's my great, great, great grandfather. And you say you're the last of the line? Yeah, I'm the last of the Pikes. Well, don't look now, Orrin, but according to this, you own the entire Hooterville Valley. <laughs> it, all right. You mean this pipsqueak? <laughs> this uh, gentleman owns our valley, according to this document. Which I'll take, if you don't mind. I, I'd like to keep it in my possession. You can understand that, I'm sure. <laughs> Bye. Joe, are you going to let him go? What do you mean? What does he mean? Joe, this boy holds a power of life and death over us. We can't let him out of our sight for a minute. You want me to stick with him? Well, certainly. You're the one thing we got going for us. What are you talking about? You were the one with an N. N? Oh, for crying out loud, Joe, how dense can you get? Look, I'll spell it out for you. Warren is crazy about Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe is your niece. Therefore, you got a direct line to him. He won't make a move without consulting you. Oh, I see what you're talking about. At last. <laughs> Frankly, Joe, without this connection, we could be in a lot of trouble. Without your guiding influence, well, there's no telling what that boy might decide to do. Yeah, if he should suddenly take it into his head to foreclose. Now, now, don't worry, he won't. Not with good old Joe here acting as a father image and advising... What's the matter? I don't think he quite regards me as a father image. <laughs> well, why not? Or oh, just some little something I said to him. What, Joe? What'd you say? I told him to stop going steady with my niece. I threw him out. You, you what? <laughs> I didn't know about this. Well, you know about it now. It, you see if Orrin's still out there, Sam. Yeah, he's still standing by his Jeep. Well, get him back in here. What for? But, but, well, so you can apologize to him and, and to tell him how much you love him and, and how it was all a mistake. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Me apologize to Orrin? On your knees if you have to. Get him in here, Sam. Uh, Orrin? Could you step in for a minute, please? Yes, Mr. Drucker? Ah, uh, Joe here has something to say to you. Oh? <laughs> okay, Joe, speak your piece. <laughs> Sir, you don't really have to do this. Sir, I wouldn't have it any other way. Go on, I'll get it. I'll get it. Sign him in. Sign him in? Orrin's going to stay here? That's right. I told your uncle that I'd give my notice at the boarding house. He suggested I move into the Shady Rest. Oh, that's wonderful. How about room eight? No, I'll give room number seven. That's a Millard P. Bradley suite. But that's four dollars a day. Not for my friend here. He's a guest of the house. <laughs> oh, no, that, that's okay, Mr. Carson. I'll take a cheaper room and pay for it. No, no, the Millard P. Bradley suite. Complete with pitcher and basin. <laughs> Here you are, Orrin. Thank you. <laughs> I can't ever recall Uncle Joe carrying someone's luggage before. Only once. When that fellow with the tennis shoes was staying here and Uncle Joe thought he was Howard Hughes. <laughs> Did I just hear Oren's voice? You sure did. He just moved into the Shady Rest. Does Uncle Joe know about this? He was the one who checked him in. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Oren owns all of Hooterville Valley, does it? Uh, 
Not a thing. Do you think it might? Oh, there's the cannonball. Listen, don't wait dinner for me. I have to go over to the county seat on some legal matters, so I'll be a little late. You know, Bobby Joe, I don't like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, that part I like, you sitting next to me. What don't you like? Hmm? You said you didn't like something. I did? Boy, at times like this, it's awful hard to think of stuff I don't like. <laughs> well, it must have been something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like taking advantage of your uncle, you know, moving in and living rent-free. Well, Orrin, you have to expect that. That's what people do for a person who is powerful and wealthy. Who's powerful and wealthy? You are. I am? You own the whole Hooterville Valley. Golly, I keep forgetting that. You're a king. Anything you want, the people will knock themselves out to get it for you. Oh, I don't believe that. Try me. What would you like? A sandwich. <laughs> I, I haven't had any lunch. So you'd like a sandwich? <laughs> what kind would you like? Sliced ham, meatloaf, peanut butter, jelly? A meatloaf would be fine. One meatloaf coming up. <laughs> hey, this is kind of fun. Yeah, sort of makes me feel like Jackie. Jackie? And you're on Essence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or Grace and Veneer. Yeah, that's quite a combination, too. Not any better than this combination. Uh, uh, Bobby Joe? Hmm? You, um... You sort of talk like, uh, like we'll be getting married right away. And I, I keep telling you, I can't even think about it till I get at least two more pay raises. You own the whole Hooterville Valley. Darling, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> Here you are, sir. Well, thank you, my good man. Oh, there's one of our subjects now. Hello there. <laughs> Can I get you anything more? Hi, Ernie. Listen, uh, could you tell me something? What's that? Has the Shady Rest Hotel been converted into a funny farm? What are you talking about? Well, I just saw with my own eyes Uncle Joe waiting on Orrin, bringing him a sandwich. <laughs> Sweetheart, people would bring you sandwiches if you owned the whole valley. Oh, come on. So by some fluke, he happened to... Betty Jo, how do you make cherries jubilee? Cherries jubilee? Yes, His Excellency. I mean, Oren wants it for his dessert. Well, get him the leftover rice pudding. <laughs> I'll look at him the cookbook. As soon as I take this up and put Kathy Jo down for a nap, I'll fix you lunch. Even though you're not royalty. <laughs> Oh, hi, sir. Oh, hi, Steve. He asked me to wait inside till he finished eating. Oh, brother. Hey, I'm going to do an interview with him for the Hooterville World Guardian. Going to put out a special issue. You too, huh? Wonder where I ought to feature his picture. You got a comic section? <laughs> Steve, that's disrespectful. You're talking about the man who owns the entire valley. There are pots. You wait here. Mr. Drucker, he'll see you now. Oh, thank you, my big Joe. Uh, ma'am. Miss? Your Highness will suffice. <laughs> well, uh, Mayor, what's new? Well, as you can see, Steve, plenty. Uh, do you have a tape measure around here? A tape measure? Yes. We're putting up a life-size statue of Orrin Pike in the town square. You got it. No, and it won't cost the taxpayers a cent. All by private donation. Oh, well, you can put me down for a sizable contribution. Oh, fine, fine. I'll donate the pigeons. <laughs> this. Yeah, that's not bad. How about this? Oh, I like that. It's much more befitting. You know, Mr. Pike, uh, 
now that you're the new owner of the valley and I'm the mayor, I was thinking that maybe you'd like to make a statement, uh, you know, to benefit all the people so they'll know what to expect in the future. That's very good thinking, Mayor. Tonight I'll throw a party here at the Shady Rest. And at that time I'll have a proclamation ready for my people. <laughs> Yes, How about doing a song for our honored guests? Fine with us. What would you like to hear? How about something from the King and I? The King and I? Well, it's fitting, Oren. You're the King. <laughs> then there's I. Oh, I keep forgetting. I am the King. Now, wine for my subjects. Bring on the wine. Oren, we don't have any wine. Oh, that's all right. I don't drink anyway. On with the song. By order of His Majesty, Good King Oren. <laughs> a law was made a distant moon ago here. July and August cannot be too chill. And there's a legal limit to the snow here in Hooterville. <laughs> the winter is forbidden till December. And exits March the second by his will. By order, summer lingers through September in Hooterville. Hooterville, Hooterville. I know it sounds a bit bizarre, but in Hooterville, Hooterville, that's how conditions are. The rain may never fall till after sundown. By eight, the morning fog. In short, there never will be a more congenial bill or happily ever after than here in the Now let's do one we can all say. Yeah, it's an excellent idea. How about for he's a delicate fellow? For he's a delicate fellow. <laughs> He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good Look, I don't know what this is all about, but could you make it fast? Because I want to get back to my people. Well, about that, um, your people. I mean, um... Yes, ma'am. Uh-uh. You mean they're not? When I was over the county seat today, I, I checked into this deed of yours. Well, there's a record of it, isn't there? Oh, yes, there is, but do you know how old this deed is? Oh, a hundred years or so. It was granted during the Civil War. What was I got to do with it? Oh, oh, oh. Your great ancestor was rewarded for help he gave to the losing side. The losing side? Yes, the Confederate governor that signed this gave away land that he didn't own. The losing side. Well, that's a pike for you. you come from a long line of losers. Oh, Arlen, right. I'm sorry. And after me making such a jerk out of myself, and the worst part of it is it's going to kill me with Bobby Joe. Well, why should it? Are you, are you kidding? When her uncle finds out that deed's worthless, guess who else is going to be worthless? Um, what if he doesn't exactly find out? Well, I couldn't lie about it. Oh, of course not. But supposing you did the noble thing and tore it up. Tore it up? Yes. It would have just as great an effect as if you said it was worthless. Oh, with one major exception. What's that? Just think how grateful Bobby Joe's uncle would be. Not to mention all the others. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, you're a queen. And uh, if I still owned Hooterville, I I'd make you one. Uh, people of the valley, 
I told you I had a pronouncement to make, uh, and as the poet says, actions speak louder than words. So my pronouncement is this. Well, go on. What are you doing? Oh, no, there, there, child. It's a far better thing I do than I've ever done. Does this mean what I think it means? Yes, sir. I'm renouncing my ownership of the valley. What happens to us? My boy. It's a noble thing you've just done, and we are all grateful. As far as you and my niece are concerned, you have my blessings to escort her whenever you wish, just so you get her in by 9.30. Tommy <laughs> Joe, do you have any taste? <laughs> oh, wait. It's all right. You don't have to get her in by 9.30. We'll make it uh, 10. <laughs> well, Lindsay. 